So if you haven't seen already, there is quite a bit of information that has come out about this Alaska Airlines 737 MAX 9 accident that occurred or incident. And it occurred in Portland, Oregon the other day uh, as Alaska Airlines Flight 1282 operating Portland to Ontario. And there's a lot of misinformation that sort of thing out there about what actually happened. I am an aircraft dispatcher at an airline here in the United States. And so I thought in today's video, I could actually explain to everyone watching what actually happened, what the consequences of it are, and what that means for you as part of the flying traveling public. So let's get started on today's video, talk about what went on and what you need to know about this incident. And should you be concerned about flying the 737 MAX? Let's get started. On January the 5th, 2023, Alaska Airlines 1282 departed Portland, Oregon, bound for Ontario on its usual regularly scheduled service as flight 1282, operating on the Boeing 737 MAX 9. This aircraft was November 704 Alpha Lima, an only two month old Boeing 737 MAX 9. One of a large number that Alaska Airlines is eventually going to have, they're going to have over 100 of them, along with the 737 MAX 8, which they just started receiving. Now, this aircraft departed. Portland and took off as per usual, but then shortly after departure at about 16,000 feet, the aircraft experienced an explosive decompression as part of the aircraft burst off and fell to the ground. The aircraft declared an emergency, circled back around and landed back at Portland. Fortunately, the flight was not full. A lot of people say it was a 170 passenger flight. That is incorrect. 170 is the seating capacity of the Alaska 737 MAX 9. There were not 170 passengers on board. It will look to be, from the pictures and videos I've seen, about a two-thirds to three-quarters full flight. So it actually looks like there's probably, including crew members, probably around 130 to 150 passengers and crew members on board the aircraft. Once the aircraft landed, a lot of pictures have been taken. You can see them online. Videos have been taken. It looks interesting. It looks like a hole was ripped out of the aircraft and something fell out. What was that item? and is it of significance. After that, Alaska Airlines announced that they'd be grounding and re-inspecting a large portion of the 737 MAX 9 fleet, and I believe they'll be doing that for all of them. And the FAA has also issued a grounding order for several 737 MAX 9s. This has been followed up by United also announced that they will be grounding a large portion of the MAX 9s for re-inspection. So what is this part that fell off the aircraft? Well, what it is, is an emergency exit row. Kind of, sort of. And I'll get to that here in a second. Um, now, of course, a lot of people are already concerned because the 737 MAX has a history uh, with the two crashes that occurred uh, back in 2019. However, after that accident occurred, the 737 MAX went under extreme scrutiny, both from the Federal Aviation Administration, by Boeing themselves, and by every other major aviation regulator in the world. The complete process to get the aircraft recertified took about two years, and in February 2021, the aircraft was in fact recertified and started operations again. Now, it should be mentioned that because of this, the aircraft got scrutinized more than any other commercial airline that's ever been created. So as a result, you would think that the aircraft having been scrutinized so heavily and redesigned, essentially, would be the safest airliner in the world, because after such scrutiny, a lot was fixed and a lot of other changes and updates were made to the aircraft to make it as safe as humanly possible. So as a result, my thought would have been, okay, they've made all these changes, a long list of changes, long list of changes, and they did a lot of things to make the aircraft safer and more redundant systems. So why would something like this happen? Well, you need to understand what actually occurred. So a explosive decompression is where the aircraft loses its pressurization in a rapid manner. When you're up at altitude, you don't have as much air pressure, so it's more difficult to breathe. And so these aircraft are built with pressurization systems to add air pressure at about 10,000 feet altitude. And so the aircraft is pressurized to feel like you're about 10,000 feet to make it a little bit more relaxing for the customers and to be able to breathe, obviously. Well, what this does when you're at a high altitude and you've got a lot of air pressure, if there's any leak in the system, there can be an explosive decompression where a hole is opened up and all that pressure there rapidly leaves the cabin like really quickly, like right out like that. And people have gotten killed from that. People have gotten sucked out of airplanes. So you may remember a few years ago, 
a passenger was sucked out of a Southwest 737 window because of a rapid decompression, explosive decompression. Fortunately, in this situation, no one was sitting by the window in the road where this happened. In fact, it looked like from the videos, no one was sitting in the couple rows around it. So very fortunate that no one was in that one. That probably saved a few people's lives, because otherwise, most likely someone would have gotten sucked out of the aircraft. That just is the reality of the situation. So what is it that blew off the aircraft? Well, what this is, is an emergency exit row door, kind of. So the Boeing 737 MAX 9 and the Boeing 737-900, which is a 737-NG aircraft, both have emergency exit doors, but they also have this special exit door, which is located about two thirds down the, down the aft portion of the aircraft. You've probably seen if you looked at pictures of 737-900 MAX 9, this is what looks like an emergency exit door behind the wing. But if you're walking inside the cabin or you've actually sat in a 737-900 MAX 9, you may be like, I don't see an exit here. Where is it? Well, what it is, is it's actually what is referred to as a door plug. It's not actually an exit, but it kind of is. You see, the 737-900 is a large enough aircraft and can fit enough people that regulatorily, it needs to have a certain number of flight attendants and emergency exits. However, the 737-900 MAX 9 are offered in different configurations. Most operators in the United States operate a three-class layout, first class, three economy, economy. And that is underneath the 200 passenger limit for you would need that extra flight attendant and extra set of emergency exits. However, some airlines, such as Lion Air in Asia, do operate these 737-900s with over 200 passengers and those are legally required to have those emergency exits there. If you are, if you are flying on Lion Air, you will see the 737-900s have the emergency exit row there. There are also a few 737-900s operated by Delta Airlines, which are former Lion Air 737-900s, and these also have an emergency exit where this exit door is near the back. However, most airlines opted for a three-class lower density variant. And so this aircraft is the one that Alaska Airlines operate in this incident. And as a result, it does not require the door to be there. But why does it look like there was a door there? Well, it's because it's called a door plug. It's not actually a door on the inside. On the inside, it's a regular trim piece. However, on the outside, on the metal skin, it is a door. There's like a full seal and everything. There, but it's not easily openable. It's meant to be so that so the aircraft need to be converted to a high density version, it could be easily. So the cutout for the door is there. The door is there, but a lot of the mechanical components of it are not there. So there's no hinges, there's no latches, nothing like that. It's just the skin is there for what could be an emergency exit door. And therefore the door is kind of there. But on the inside of the cabin, it's just finished like a regular 737, so you would not even know that's there. There's only one way to know. If you're flying a 737 900 MAX 9, know which row has this exit. On United, because I fly United the most often, when I non rev, um, that is row 30 on the 737 900. And it's easy to tell because there'll be one window, and then there's this, usually on the 737s, there are two windows per frame, per panel on the inside of the aircraft. However, on the MAX 9 and 900 where the door plug is, there's only one window. It's in the middle of that panel instead of two. So it's, if you take a look at that, you can see where the door, which panel is the door plug. This is the one that had the rapid decompression on the Alaska MAX 9. And so it was this one where this incident occurred. Now, why would something like this happen? And why hasn't it happened before? What I'm next gonna be doing is partly some speculation. So this is not official, we do not know what it is yet. However, some part of that door system, door plug failed and lost decompression, and therefore the door plug was blown out. But as the door plug was being blown out, it also blew out the portion of the interior that was with it. So the interior trim piece blew out and the entire, essentially effectively the entire door is blown out. You can see from the pictures of the incident that is very much what appears to have happened. So how does it like this have happened? Most likely it probably was a failed seal on the door plug 
and because it's just a door plug, not actually a door itself, it doesn't have to be inspected as often. So most likely what happened is the door plug failed. A seal or something that kept it sealed up failed and it wasn't caught in inspection or wasn't inspected because it wasn't required to be. And therefore at some point it weakened enough to where it blew out. Now this aircraft was also fairly new, so it is possible it was a manufacturer defect and it was not caught. That's also another possibility. So those are most likely what happened. Again, we have to wait for an investigation and the NTSB to find out what really happened. But that's the, the information that we have so far. And I want to give some information to correct some misinformation that's out there. This is not an emergency exit door. This is not a regular seat. This is a door plug. So it could be easily converted to being an emergency exit. The initial necessary hardware is there. They just have to turn it and convert it into an actual door, add the emergency exit slides, the mechanical linkage, all that stuff. But the initial portion of the skin that needs to be built to have that door has already been done. So it does not have to go through a very long rehauling service to have it done. It'd be fairly quick and easy, convenient way of making the change. This is mostly done for manufacturing purposes to make it easier to produce. To produce both variants, the one without the door and the one with the door. So instead, the door plug is there. So, is the 737 MAX safe to fly? And a lot of people are concerned because, oh, another MAX failure. It doesn't really affect the MAX in terms of its safety. Because this is something that could happen on a MAX 9 or 737-900. This fault is not unique to the 737 MAX. So, it's most likely was either a faulty part that was installed brand new or failure to do proper inspections. We're, we're going to find out what it was, but that's what I think most likely happened. The Centaur 7 Max is safe to fly, in particular after all the scrutiny it went under. It's most likely one of the safest airliners in the world to fly on just because of the extreme scrutiny that no other commercial airliner has ever gone under. And so I personally think if you want to fly, the 737 MAX is perfectly safe to fly. And so yeah, that's that. So that's my thoughts on Alaska Airlines 1282, the explosive decompression. And wanted to clear up some information that a lot of people are going out there. Um, and misinformation people are giving out there about the incident. So I wanted to put that video out. Hope you all enjoyed it. Also, trying a slightly new, different kind of hairstyle. You know, I kind of want to like it up and kind of have like a little curl to it so i'm kind of experimenting see what i think and uh, just trying some new things out so that being said thank you all so much for watching this video have a great rest of your day god bless peace out